Hi everybody, this is Philip. Welcome back. This video is going to be really different. I haven't done a video like this before, and uh, this is my 101st video that I'm going to be posting, so I thought as an anniversary video, it might be interesting to do something a little bit different. I've been talking about doing some content that's a little more vlog-like, and this is a great opportunity to do that. I've been receiving a lot of emails and comments from people who are feeling a little lost. They don't really know um, where to go. They're feeling stuck or they're possibly feeling left behind or too old to start doing what they're, they want to be doing. And as you can see, I have gray hair. I've been around a long time. I've had a very uh, long, successful career up to this point. And I wanted to share a little bit about my career and also uh, share some of the life lessons, some of the career lessons that I've learned, and hopefully they might be able to help some of you out there. So I wanted to take this opportunity to do that. So this video is going to be a little longer. It's probably going to be a little less tightly edited than some of my other videos, um, but hopefully you'll you'll bear with me. And if you don't want to, change the channel. Anyway, so first of all, my career has been great. I've had a 30-year career in branding and design, um, and it hasn't been incredibly linear. I talk a lot about career webs and how you know careers have jogs and and uh, and changes, and you have to deal with adversity and you have to deal with changes in you know the job market and and uh, what's happening in the world. And I've had a lot of that, and I wanted to share a little bit of that with you. I actually started off my career as a fine artist. I started off as a painter. I have my master's degree in painting. And what I wanted to do at first um, was be a fine artist. And as I progressed in that and realized I had to make a living, I decided to teach. And at the period of time that I was uh, doing that, there was no internet, there were no computers, so that totally dates me. But that also figures into my story a little bit um, in having to deal with that evolution in society um, when it came to my career. And so I got my master's in painting. I was looking for teaching work, and it was almost impossible to find college-level teaching work anywhere. And so I, I was looking for almost five years working in restaurants and galleries and stuff just to make a living. So eventually I landed a teaching job in the south of France, and I got to go over there, and I was teaching printmaking and photography. And I had an amazing time over there and produced a whole lot of monotypes, um, fine art prints. And when I came back, I moved to New York City and I started a t-shirt company and started to put some of those mono prints on t-shirts. And I learned very quickly that I loved doing the design part of it. I wasn't super excited about doing the sales part of it. I walked the, walked the entire island of Manhattan with my sample case selling my t-shirts. Um, and, you know, at that time, that was kind of the dawn of the computer age. But I was very much in a fine art head mindset. I, you know, hated what I saw was computer art at the time. I hated commercial art. I was very, you know, um, I was a true artist in my head. But I was also struggling with a way to make a living. And I eventually went and worked for one of my competitors, a larger t-shirt company in um, a section of Brooklyn, about a $5 million t-shirt company. And I came in as a designer, worked my way up very quickly to be art director and creative director and was managing other people. And I found out very quickly that managing other designers was very much like teaching, except you got paid a lot more money and you weren't out of work every nine months. And so it was, a, you know, an epiphany and it started off the beginning of a great career. I worked for that company for about five years and then I eventually went to work for a much larger uh, global fashion company and was there for about 11 years. I worked my up, way up from senior designer up to vice president of design and I was overseeing packaging and uh, graphic design for products, so t-shirts and apparel and also um, so CAD, so textile design, and uh, trend and color. I was overseeing all of those groups. So I grew over a period of time, 11 years, from a designer to very much a design manager and a creative director. And in that time, I learned, you know, corporate finance and budget managing and people managing and, you know, setting goals for people and growing designers and dealing with and living in and working in an incredibly complex and matrixed corporate environment. And that was really a very watershed period of time for me. Um, after 11 years, there was a big reorganization of that company and I got laid off. And that was pretty shocking. 
uh, I found myself out of work. And um, at that time, I decided to leverage my understanding and knowledge, my new knowledge in packaging. And I went to work for a global uh, design agency. And when I worked for that agency, I knew nothing about brand strategy. I knew about, you know, product design and apparel design and graphics for T-shirts. But when it came down to brand strategy and, um, you know, competitive audits and all of the, you know, scientific methodology of brand development, I knew nothing of that. And I was coming in at a very senior level to um, a global agency. So in working with that agency and then in another, you know, agency uh, a while later, I worked with, you know, some of the biggest brands in the world, some of the biggest brands of the Fortune 100, actually, you know, P&G, Johnson Johnson, Chevron, PetSmart, um, you know, Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola, uh, Diamond Foods. I mean, the list just goes on and on. You can look at my portfolio on my website. I've worked with a lot of big brands and that was an incredible learning experience and a huge um, learning curve for me coming out of, you know, the very senior role that I was in in the fashion industry. And I worked in the global branding agency world for about eight years. And then I eventually made the jump over to one of the global food brands, you know, more largest, you know, uh, soft drink brands in the world and worked there for a period of time. Um, when I came out of that role or decided to leave that role, I had really kind of come to the point of burnout. I was, it was a global role. I was working 60, 80 hour weeks. I was traveling a lot. Um, it was very, very stressful. I was losing sleep. I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning with panic attacks. I also had some family stuff going on. My, one of my parents was in the midst of kind of starting to uh, uh, get old and, and eventually pass away. And it, so it was, it was a, a huge emotional shift. And I just decided to quit. I decided to walk away from that whole part of my career. And it was, I had to discover what I really enjoyed uh, about what I was doing. I wasn't sure I was really enjoying what I was doing anymore. And I needed some time away from it to think. So I took about a year off. I was very fortunate in the fact that I'd been well compensated for, you know, 18 years and was able to take some time off. Um, and in that period of time, I totally rebooted. I decided to start my own agency. I started to build my own personal brand. Up until that point, I'd only had, you know, a slideshow uh, portfolio online with basically my resume on a page. It was totally rudimentary. Um, and I had no personal brand. I knew nothing about, you know, email marketing. I knew nothing about social media marketing. I knew nothing about content development. And it was a complete re reboot. And I had to learn an incredible amount of stuff. And over the last three or four years, I have completely changed what I do and how I approach my career. I took everything what I knew from fashion and everything what I knew from the global branding agency and applied that to my own career and my own brand. I've been building brands for other people and other companies for over two decades and had never really concentrated on building my own. So now that I've been doing that, that's one of the things that I'm doing on this YouTube channel is I'm sharing a lot of what I know from my global branding work and also my corporate work and scaling it down so I can help entrepreneurs and designers grow their careers and grow their brands the way I've grown mine and the way I've helped other people grow uh, their brands and other companies grow their brands. Obviously, I haven't done all that work on my own. I've always managed large teams and I've, I've you know, done my work by leveraging the work of others as a leader, creative leader in organizations. So, you know, one of the big themes here is that as massive changes have happened in my career, I've had to relearn, you know, very new things. For instance, when I went from fine art to working in the apparel industry, there weren't computers and suddenly there were, and I had to learn, you know, computers. And the great thing is, is when I got in and started learning the very first Photoshop and the very first Illustrator, I absolutely loved it and took it to it like a duck to water. And, you know, I spent my evenings reading fi those old printed 500 page Photoshop, you know, manuals to learn everything about the program. I absolutely loved it. But that was one of the huge watershed moments in my career where I had hated commercial art, I hated computers. And suddenly when I tried it and got into it, I realized I absolutely loved it and had a great, um, had a great uh, aptitude for it. So 
that was one of those kind of web moments when of my career where I made this serious jog to the side and everything changed. But as it changed and as I hit that adversity, everything opened up for me. And so then when I went from the fashion industries to the agency world, it was a kind of a cataclysm and event. I got laid off and I moved to the agency side and I had to learn an entire new kind of skill set and range of things in order to succeed and grow in that industry. Then when I went you know, back to corporate and then eventually out on my own, when I out, went out on my own, I realized there was this huge range of things, like I just said a while back, that I didn't know and that I had to learn as well. So there are always challenges that you get thrown into in your career that you have to um, address, that you have to um, kind of take in and deal with. So in a way, I know that, you know, this video is kind of like the long blathering on video that I always say that I don't do, but um, it's, you know, something that I've never done. And I thought I'd try to share kind of a deeper level of, uh, you know, who I am with my audience. And so now in the video comes the time where I talk a little bit more about kind of the overall life lessons and career lessons that I've learned from this career that I just described. Part of it is that you really have to be prepared and ready for massive shifts that happen. Those shifts might be that you get laid off or some sort of reorganization or some sort of life change, a, you know, death of a spouse or a friend or a parent, um, you know, having to move for any reason from one city to another or from one country to another. Things get thrown in our way and having to address and change and um, deal with those changes are going to happen no matter what. And so not being in denial and um, standing up to meet those challenges and meet those changes and accept them and learn from them um, and to look at, you know, chaos and change as an opportunity to learn and to grow rather than to be, um, you know, stifled or to be shut down or to, you know, feel defeated. It's really difficult to see, but when those changes happen, you have to look at those change moments as an opportunity to learn, grow, and take a side jog in the web of your career and get taken to a new, new level. And that's why I'm sharing a little bit about my personal experience, because every time I've met with that kind of, uh, you know, heavy impact of uh, adversity, it has eventually through, you know, attention and hard work and, um, and you know, uh, energy, turned into something over time, not immediately, but over time into something really positive uh, for my career. And yes, maybe I've been lucky, um, but I don't really, um, I really have seen this happen in a lot of people's careers and I've managed a lot of people and helped guide them through their careers and stay in touch with a lot of people that I've worked with. And I see this again and again um, in other people's lives as well as mine, but I'm sharing my own personal experience. One of the big watershed moments of my career was when I made that shift from fine art to commercial art, from to, into the fashion industry, and then eventually into corporate life. And at the time, I was I felt very defeated. I felt like I was selling out. I was totally selling out, selling out my fine art ideals. But what happened was, in that shift, I opened up an entirely new life for myself. I, I, you know, where I had been struggling to make a living and really struggling to figure out what to do with my life, I suddenly was given a tremendous amount of opportunity. And I uh, grew into roles that I never thought that I would ever be able to handle. And I, you know, to be honest, made a lot more money than I ever thought was conceivably possible. Um, in in my career so i had uh, you know things open up and and ideas i had about my life were totally redefined by shifting my attention and by being open to a change and buying be, being not in denial and being open to the reality of what was happening in my life so here when i thought i had sold out what did i actually get what i actually really got was a fantastic career I got, uh, you know, a great portfolio. I got to work with amazing brands. I got to learn an incredible amount. I got to work with some of the best designers in the world. I got to manage and grow and mentor, you know, tons of designers um, in their careers, which, 
you know, as you talk about things circling back around, I had always wanted to be a teacher and loved teaching when I was in fine art. And I found that managing designers was a lot like teaching and mentoring creatives through their careers was a lot like teaching and is teaching. So that love kind of circled back around through my career in a very different way. Another point, you know, that I wanted to make was that, you know, as I said, I'm no spring chicken, but when it came, when it came down to it, when I was coming out of the fine art world and moving into design, I wasn't young. I was 29, 30 years old. I didn't even get into design. I didn't even get into a career that wasn't fine arts until I was 30 years old. And I get these comments and emails from people saying, you know, I'm 24. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with my life or I'm, you know, I'm 30 and I'm thinking about changing careers. It's never too late. It is absolutely never too late to make any major shifts in your life. When I made this shift from being corporate agency guy to being brand entrepreneur and working in my own agency, you know, I was over 50. And, you know, that is a significant change and also one that was, you know, it was not minor. And so I, you know, embraced that. I learned more. I dove into it. I accepted that reality and that new, you know, direction for myself. And so it is never too late. It's never too late to learn. It's never too late to shift. It's never too late to make a jog in your, in your, the web of your career. And another, you know, aspect of that is you have to pay attention to what you hate. You have to pay attention to what it is that you really don't want to do and look at that and say, you know, why is it that I don't want to do that? Or why is it that I, you know, I hate that aspect of something? Because within that, sometimes you have to look and say, is my deciding that I don't want to do this and don't want to do that and don't want to do that other thing? Am I setting up walls for myself? Am I setting up limiting beliefs for myself or limiting beliefs for my career that if I relook at those or re-examine those in a different way, that that might actually open up doors for me that give me opportunities that I never thought were possible or if I explore or tiptoe into some of those things that I had drawn as lines for myself, could that open up something that could be really you know, beneficial to my career. And aspects of what you love and what you're passionate about, like for me is teaching, have a way of circling back and into your career. No matter what you do, you'll always find a way to leverage or grow or uh, utilize those passions, um, no matter what it is that you do. So, you know, to kind of wrap some of this up is that, you know, when it comes down to success is not a straight line. Success takes consistency, you know, a lot of hard work, tenacity, constant learning, um, you know, a positive attitude. But it's definitely not a straight line. It has jogs and changes in directions. And it's not without pain. Pain comes whenever change comes. There's this thing that says, you know, if you're in pain, it means you're changing. And so whenever you feel you know, pain or discomfort, it can signal that change is coming and change can be opportunity. Change leads to opportunity. So you know, the, if, there, if I was to leave you with one message, it would be that you know, life is really freaking short and don't take anything for granted. And you know, success, whatever you define as success, when you get there, it never brings as much happiness as you would think. So you really have to enjoy the journey and, you know, the changes and the and the opportunities and the movement and the growth um, as you go along through your life. No one is ever going to hand you anything. It's really up to you. It's really up to you to make it happen and to deal with the changes that happen in your life, whether they're choices that you make to change what you're doing or change a focus of what you're doing, or whether it's some sort of adversity or change that gets thrown at you that you're not expecting and you're not anticipating. But it doesn't mean that that's going to shut you down. It's going to shut your career down. All you have to do is kind of back up, take stock, look around, see where the opportunities are, and you can be successful. And so thanks a lot for watching this. I just wanted to share a little bit more context around, you know, who I am, where I've come from, what I've done, and some of the things that I've learned in my career with hopes that, you know, some of my viewers, some of my tribe members 
who have uh, you know been commenting and sending me emails and I just hope that I've been able to share something that you know can give you some insight or give you a way of looking at something in your career um, uh, you know through a different lens or a different perspective and with that thanks again for watching and bye for now